Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we're about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 200. And 57. Please turn to it. Page number 257 and today is our lesson number 65. The very first problem that you see there on the page number 257. Problem number 11. It says what is 215.4 percent? 215.4 percent of 55. Now always keep in mind that the exam that you're preparing for is a standardized exam and just like and just like any other standardized exam just like any other standardized exam anywhere in the world for anything at all the amount of work that one puts into a problem in a standard exam depends not only into what is being not only it depends on not only what is being asked in the question but the amount of work that you put into a given problem equally depends on how the answer choices are presented to you. How the answer choices are presented to you play just as much of a role into the amount that you decide that you're going to put into it. If the answer choices are too far apart, it's a different animal. If the answer choices are too close to each other, then you have to do more precise work. Here, the answer choices that are given to us are here are the answer choices. I'm going to write down all the answer choices. The first answer choice is 1111847. The second answer choice that they give us is 11847. The third answer choice they give us is 11847. And the fourth and the final answer choice they give us is 11847. The only difference here, the only thing that they are playing around with, are the decimal points. Let's see where do they start out. I'm looking at the answer choices. 1, 1, so 11.87, they begin with here, 11.84, then 118, then 1084, and finally this part right here. They're moving the decimal point, as you can see, they're they are moving the decimal points here. That's what it is. In other words, each answer choice is 10 times the amount of, of the previous amount. That's, that's a, they're, they're very far apart. They're just trying to see if you know how to multiply your decimal. Don't do that. It will take too much time. If you sit there like a good schoolboy and a schoolgirl, if you sit there and you know multiply it out uh, like you're supposed to do, it will take too long. Look, we know, we know, 100% of 55. How much is 100% of 55? Oh, 100% of 55 is 55. If 100% of 55 is 55, then 200% should be twice as much. So we know now that 200% of 55 is 110. 200% is 110. They're looking for 215%. 215% is going to be slightly, slightly more than 110. Just pick an answer choice that is slightly more than 110. There's only going to be one answer choice that's slightly more than 110. And that answer choice is right here. The answer choice B. 118 is the answer. There is no need to waste your time there trying to do it out, as I said, like a good school girl or school school boy. It will take too much time. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? Number 12. Just give me a second. Number 12. It says a school nurse association is having its annual conference. The nurses elegant event, oh fine then, and they are catering the event uh, and is catering the closing luncheon. All right. The, re the reservation has been received from 315 nurses and 53 guests. All right. So we have we have a luncheon going on in the next problem number 12. We are told that we have a luncheon and we are told that uh, we have 315 nurses and we have 53 guests. So far so good. They go on to tell us that uh, 
315 nurses and 53 guests. The luncheon cost of each of the nurses is $18 and each guest is $25. So this is $18 per nurse, $18 per nurse, and this is $25 per guest. And I suppose they are looking for the total cost obviously. What is the accurate estimate? Oh, there is a new one. Which of the following? Oh, I, I, I skipped there. We're doing number 12, not, 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 not 13. Number 12, it says, which of the following is the cost of the luncheon? There you go. They're looking for the cost of the luncheon. Again, again, there are two ways we can go about it. Like, the, the, like in the previous question, there, are, there were two ways we, we could have done the previous multiplication. They are 215.4% or for 55 we had two choices we could have done it the traditional way the orthodox way the classical way the academic way which is to actually do it out or the quick and dirty way that i just showed you here also there are a couple of ways we can do it we could actually sit there we could actually sit there and multiply this number out 315 times 18 i don't have the patience for that so here's what we're going to do okay push this 315 if you were to stick one zero next to it that will represent that will represent 10 315. We need 18 315. We need 18 315. That will represent 10 315. Are you with me so far? Similarly, if you were to take one more 3150, that will represent other 10 315. Add them all up, you get a 0, 2, 6300. You see again, you see the reason I made a mistake here, I'm trying to point that out. The reason I made a mistake is because I was adding it up in a mechanical way. Had I just used my brain, I would not have made that mistake. 150 plus 150 is 300. I only reason you see there, I forgot to carry one, is because I was behaving like a robot, like a, like a, like a nerd, like a freak, like a geek. Just use your common sense. 150 plus 150 is 300. And 3000 plus 3000 is 6000. So 6300 represents 20 times 315. Okay, stay with me in the story. It's very important that you stay in the story. We do not need 20 of them. We don't need 20 times 315. We need 18. So we have to subtract two 315s. Okay, listen very carefully. Two 315s. How much is how much are how much is two 315s? 300 plus 300 is 600, and 15 plus 15 is going to be 30. We subtract 630 from it, and that represents two times 315. That's it. We are done. So I get 0, we get a 7 here, this, this is going to become 2, 12 minus 2 is going to become 6, and this is going to become 5. And I get 5, 6, 5, 6, 7, 0 is the cost for the three, uh, for 315 nurses. We have to figure out the guess. Again, we have two choices. We have, there are two choices we can go about it. The traditional way, the orthodox way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, the academic way, which is actually do it out. I'm not going to do it that way. Okay, listen to me. 5, 53. If we stick two zeros to it, what would that represent? That will represent 100 times 53. 100 times 53. Where can I put it here? 100 times, this is 100 times 53. We don't need 100 times 53. We need 25 times 53. So I'm just going to take a fourth of that amount. And, and it's not that complicated. Taking a fourth of that amount is not that complicated. You will see in a second. How many, how many fours in a five? Five has only one four. The remaining one goes and joins this guy becomes 13. How many fours in a 13? We know 12 has three fours. 12, 12 has three fours because three fours are 12. The remaining one goes and joins this guy becomes 10. How many fours in a 10? 10 has two fours. Two fours are eight. I said two fours and I put down eight. Two fours are eight. It has 10 has two fours. The remaining two goes and joins this zero becomes 20. How many fours in a 20? 20 has five fours. One more time I'm going to do it. One more time I'm going to do it slowly if you want to, if you want me to do it one more time. Here we go. Uh, let's do it on top here, you see. 53 times 100 is 5300. We don't need 53 times 100, we need 53 times 24. So we need to divide this 100 by 4, which is what we're doing here. We're dividing it by 4. And that's all it is. And and uh, we can do. We don't. When we have to divide a number by another number, we don't have to do it long way, long hand, uh, the traditional method, the childish method. We can do the grown-up methods. How many fours in a five? Five has only one four. The one goes and joins the third three becomes thirteen. How many fours in thirteen? Thirteen has three fours. Three fours are twelve. Three fours are twelve. The remaining one is going to go and joins the zero becomes ten. How many fours in a ten? 
10 has two fours, two fours are eight. The remaining two goes and joins the zero becomes 20. How many fours in a 20? 20 has five fours. Voila, this is the cause. This is 53 times 25 is 1325. So let's set it up, 1325 and we are done. We get a five here, seven plus two is nine, six plus three is nine, five plus three is Looks like $6,995 is the answer. $6,995. The answer twice C. The answer is C. That was question number 12. Let's move on then to number 13. Number 13. On the same page, in number 13 we are told that a couple is buying a living room furniture. The sofa retails for $899. Alright, so here is our sofa for $899. We are told that the chair is going to cost us $695. Coffee table is going to cost us coffee table is going to cost us 379 and table we're going to and table is going to cost us 229 and the lamps we are told are going to cost us 149 again we simply have to add them up again we're not going to waste our time adding them up precisely because that will take too much time I, I don't have the patience do you have the patience to go around adding all the nines and the five is too much work let's round these things 899 is going to become 900 and in most cases in most cases you can get away by rounding because the answers are far apart enough now in the event in the event that you find that after rounding this thing you come up with the answer choice and you look at the answer choices then and only then you should look at the answer choices you look at the answer choices and you find out that the answers are actually really too close to each other and you can't really tell which one is the right answer because of the rounding then you can just do, go and do the adjustment. Doing the adjustment is faster than doing the precise calculation from the beginning. So that's what we're going to do here. Let's see. So 695 becomes 700. I'm going to pick up speed. This becomes 380. And this is going to become 230. And 149 is going to become 150. Let's set them up. We get a 0. We have 8. And then 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. 6. Carry 1. 1 plus 9 is 10. 7 plus 3 is 10. So that's 20. And they get 23. 2360 is what we get. Let's look at the answer choices. Answer choices are 2200, 2300, 2600, and 2900. I think the answer choice 2300 is going to be the answer that we're looking for. But if you want, if you want a peace of mind, doing the adjustment actually does not take that long. It only takes a few extra seconds. I'm going to show you how to do the quick adjustment. Here we are off by $1. Here we are off by $5, here we are off by $1 again, here we are off by $1, and here we are off by $1. As you can see, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, we are only off by $9. We are only off by $9. So 2360 is what we are coming up with. Among the answer choices that you see there, the closest answer is 2300. Just by being off by $9, it's not going to bring it down to 2200. The closest answer. So the correct answer is 2300. That's all. The answer to our answer is B. Because the other answer choices that they have there are 22, 23, 26, and 29. 22, 23, 26, and 29. As you can see, these are too far apart. Am I correct? 26, 26, 29. You see, they, these are two, 26 and 29 are too far apart. And we're looking for 2360. 2360. Uh, it's not going to be 2200. The closest answer to 2360 is 23. We're looking for the, the one that is closer to 2360. The, uh, the number that is closer to 2360 is 2300. Because 2300, as you can see, is, is closer, much closer, 40, whereas this one is off by 60. The answer is B. I'm making too much fuss. Let's go to the last one, number 14. These, are, these questions are very simple. Keep them simple because once I begin to explain too much, we end up making really too much fuss about it. It gets very annoying. 
Next one, just give me one second here again for my break. There we go. I enjoy those five seconds, ten seconds break that I get in between. I sever it. Number 14. It says a father's age Y, all right. Father's age Y. I'm going to change the marker. This marker is dying. This marker is. This marker is moribund. Do we know what moribund means? Did we ever learn it? I'm curious now. I shouldn't have started this digression here. It's my, I'm looking at my vocab list here. I don't know if we have actually covered the word moribund. No, we have not. We have not. Mor Morbid simply means something that is close to dying, something that is almost dead. That marker was morbid. Father's age is four less than three times is daughter's age which we are told is X. Oh, let's, see what, let's see what we can do. In case you are wondering what I was babbling about on my channel if you are interested in improving your vocabulary you will find some vocabulary videos. Just look for them uh, and that's what I was looking here. In my, I had a list here of, uh, that, I, that I have here of, my, of the vocabulary words and I was looking under M to see if we had done more of it. We had not. We have not rather. All right, so father's age right here, Y, father's is Y, and then the next word is is. How do we write is? Is means equal, equals, four less than, four less than, we'll come to that in a second, four less than, three times daughter is, three times daughter's age, three times daughter age will be three times X, because daughter's age is X. Now what we have written so far, what we have written so far is this, what we have written is that father's age is, is, equals means is, is, equal, equal means is. So what we have written so far is father's age, because that's what Y represents, Y represents father's age. What we're what we claiming here is that father's age is three times daughter, daughter's age. But that's not what we're told. We're not told, that, we're not told that the father's age is, is three times daughter's age. We are told the father's age is four less than this amount. Father's age is four less than this amount. So we just have to subtract four. There you go, that's the answer. Father's age is four less, that's how we write four is, minus four, four less than three times daughter's age. That's all. That was the end of that page and that is the end of our lesson for today. I will see you tomorrow on page number 258. Okay, bye now.